back. As I mentioned, we have Jeff Parker here, and he's got some information for us regarding COVID. And I know we were chatting about this beforehand. And, you know, it's worrisome, concerning. Why? You All know, we, we are asking why this is happening. Yeah, I, and it's, it's hard to understand because it, it is like a wave that's going across the United States and, and really all, all uh, Europe too as well. Yeah. But um, now in the United States, certainly seeing that in the Midwest, uh, a lot of the numbers are way up type of thing. And now we're gradually seeing this wave in California. I, again, last time we talked, I think people were talking about that they're just getting out there more yeah. and they're in socializing more. and. Even though masks are super critical in that, if you're not wearing it, you're just opening up yourself for, for catching this thing. And um, so, uh, unfortunately, what we've seen in the in the last just all, since we talked on Friday, mm -hmm. um, it's a big jump in some of the, in the numbers, right. and especially in the in the um, positive cases. Now, a lot of tests, so that's good. So, the more we test, the more cases you're going to get. So, I want to within that right. context. So, we'll talk about the percentages in, in a minute. But that 512. When we spoke on Friday, my numbers were 271. Mm. So that's almost a doubling of, of right. that number, which is a um, pretty big jump for three days. And exactly. it went, and it, and it didn't just go to 512, it did go up and then up to 512 during yeah. the weekend. Um, three deaths, um, unfortunately, again, um, but as you can see, skilled nursing, assisted living, um, oh, where yeah. those critical places where, where the elderly are at, again, right. But that's important relative to the village too, because right. our age group here is more susceptible. And when they get that that kind of a um, a bug in a sense of a virus that's this strong, um, right. it, it can affect them quite a bit. Right. Um, hospitalizations are up um, to 201. That was in the one, um, 180 range when we talked. ICUs have stayed the same though. Um, so that um, that's good. maybe that's a good thing that people are getting sick, but not as sick as they were before. Let's well, right. You wonder trip. if the strain is the same, or if it's a, you know if if it's mutated, which I've heard a lot about. I mean, you can go out there and you can find all sorts of information. The question is whether or not it's truthful or not, and that's the hard thing. Well, and these hospitalizations, there there may be people that are now getting severe flus that are going to the right. hospital too, and and that's getting confusing to the to the process of how are they going to record these things. Uh, somebody, yeah. you know, if somebody goes in there with a severe flu, very very similar symptoms in a sense. Are they getting recorded as a positive case? Are they getting recorded as a case when it's hospitalization? I'm not sure how that's working so Well, or you could have the flu, but you have COVID. Yep. I mean, uh -huh. you could be yep. tested and have COVID, but you're having more flu-like symptoms. Which, which I know that is real, that is gonna be tricky. That's And that could be real dangerous. Um, with regards to this chart, and we've talked about this a lot, the average daily um, case up there for 100,000 now at the seven day average is six. Mm -hmm. That's gone up. It hasn't gone any higher than six, but the concern was it's in an upward um, growth rate. And then uh, again, back to the 5.7, the other um, red category, which is these are why we're still in the red um, tier, is that 5.7 is um, for the high um, areas where they've seen more and more cases and they need to get that down to about 5.2 in order to yeah, transition. Right. So um, I don't look at us coming out of the red fairly quickly. No. And what that means is that we're not gonna see anything open up more. The question is, can we keep this thing from growing to the point where Orange County doesn't get required to go back to the purple, which would shut more things down. I know, and that would be concerning, uh, you know, for so many businesses and restaurants in our local area who, you know, only, only started to make some kind of recovery here in the last maybe month or so. Right. And then to shut them back down again would just be, I think, horrible for our local businesses. And obviously for us, because we would like to go out and have dinner and we would like right. to do some things other than what we're doing at home. Uh, and then also in regards to the holidays that are coming up, Thanksgiving, I know the advice was not to necessarily have a congregation of family, but I mean, if you can keep it small and you can keep it maybe somewhat separated, that would be better. And, that, and that's really the guidelines that the state's talking about. If you're gonna have gatherings, have it family gatherings and have it small. Right. Um, and if you can separate it within the, the, the home, even you know people sitting in different places when they're eating probably. Right. Um, Cause that's when people take their masks off and, oh, yeah. and, and, and dialogue. I wanted to mention in, in Laguna Woods that 
Um, our residents are still doing a great job with regards to wearing their mask, and, and we, you know, the, we had the urgency ordinance, which um, went away, but the requirement still is for people to wear masks when they go outside if they can't social distance. That's the key. That's the state law that's, mm -hmm. you know, in the county. So if you're going outside, we still recommend that you wear a mask anywhere you go outside, and certainly you need that for any kind of transportation system and all of that. So we want to push that because that's what's keeping our numbers down. But we did have a jump as well this weekend. Right. We went from 79 when we talked on Friday to 84. So mm -hmm. that's a, you know, that's a pretty big jump in the sense of numbers doesn't sound like, but percentages, it's an over 6% jump. Right. And so again, being careful, that's the, now that's the community of Laguna Woods, not necessarily the village, but, right. but there's going to be, um, the cases that since we make up that 90% of the village, the chances are that that's happening mm -hmm. within the village mm -hmm. is probably more likely. And with this big spike that we're seeing statewide and countywide, um, we just don't want it to come to the village. So right. we're gonna be real careful. Um, again, we're not gonna be opening up any facilities. We're gonna just have outdoor activities so that we can maintain kind of that healthy environment. And certainly with this cooler weather, you gotta be careful. Um, yeah. People are just going to be more inclined to want to stay inside, which, you know, I understand that. And if they stay inside and don't wear masks, then that could be problematic if they have friends over in that type of activity. That's where it can be spread. Exactly. And, and they do talk a lot about circulation and what kind of, you know, air conditioning or heating units and things like that can be carried through many of those, those right. types of situations. So have to be careful, but nonetheless, they are doing a great job here in the village, and we want them to continue to do so. So keep keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Keep working on that. And, <laughs> yeah. and when you go to the website, um, the Orange County website and the state website especially, they have a lot of good information. And um, on our Friday um, newsletter that we sent out, we also talked about it quite a bit, and there's attachments there that people can click on to give um, what, what are the current regulations and how do, how do they affect you. Right. That's great. Well, good. Well, hopefully we won't see those numbers increasing as we move toward the holidays. But let's, let's hope so. Let's hope so. Great. Uh, what else do you have? Well, I just wanted to, again, mention that we um, were real successful last Halloween with um, the parade. And, and oh, that yes, was and we again. actually have some photos, some photos that I was going to show later. <laughs> which is great. I, and, and um, again, we'll be back in operation without the rain, obviously, now having our outdoor classes and that kind of activity. So I want people to make sure that they check with recreation, get in on active net and, and get registered for your classes because we want you to participate wherever you can, uh, getting some exercise and getting out there. It's cooler weather, be aware of that, um, which, but that may be um, easier to exercise in than actuality because yeah. it's more comfortable once you get heated up and get going. Right. Um, and then with regards to our network outage, a lot of work over the weekend um, to get our uh, systems back up so we're, we're moving in the right direction with that and hopefully I'll have more information to provide the community on that um, in the near future. Great, because I know that, uh, we're, like you said, they're back up and running for the most part. You can still call resident services. You can still get things done. Right. It just might take a little bit longer. Right, and okay. we're hoping to get all of us back up to normal within the next couple of weeks for sure. Wonderful, well, thank you for the information. We will see you again on Friday. Sounds great. Have thank a great you. week. And when we come back, we are gonna introduce you to Jim Hopkins, new GRF director, so stay tuned.